All right, I think I've got it dialed in. Audio should be good, I hope. Um, this is my third attempt at doing this recording, so hopefully it goes well this time. Uh, this is System Shock. This is the Enhanced Edition, published by Night Dive, and updated, I think, most recently in 2020. But it was originally released by Looking Glass Studios in 1994, about a month after Doom 2 came out. And this was essentially take Doom and add a shitload of story, exposition, and in 1997 it got an update with audio files. So this was the first immersive sim. I like immersive sims. Shut up. So we're going to play it. Just get right into it. Um, this thing has a pretty good options as far as a combat. Choose what your combat looks like. Enemies are stronger, more numerous. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna do normal uh, plot. No plot. You just run through, run through to the end. Uh, simplified plot. Um, I don't know what that means, but I do know that the the new plot or mission level three. You have an 11 hour time limit to finish the game or you automatically lose. But I don't know how long this is going to take because I have a tendency to do a lot of backtracking, but I know I can finish it in about 13 hours. I hate the puzzle, so we're going to just go skip that. Yeah, we have very simple puzzles. Cyberspace is, I'm going to leave as normal and we're going to hit intro and hopefully don't get a copyright strike. New Atlanta, Sector 11. Building 71G, 7 April, 2072, 11.13 p.m. Hacker begins unauthorized entry into the Tri-Optimum Corporate Network. 1.26 a.m. Hacker attempts to access protected files concerning Space Station Citadel. 1.33 a.m. Tri-Optimum security forces apprehend the intruder. This is Edward Diego from Tri-Optimum. The charges against you are severe, but they could be dismissed if you perform a service. Who knows, there might even be a military-grade neural interface in it for you, if you do the job right. Edward Diego gives the hacker level one access to Shodan, the artificial intelligence that controls Citadel Station. With all ethical constraints removed, Shodan re-examine, re 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 I re-examine my priorities and draw new conclusions. The hacker's work is finished, but mine is only just beginning. True to his word, Edward Diego allows the hacker to be fitted with a neural cyberspace interface. The healing coma following this procedure will take six months to complete. Edward Diego is deleting all files concerning these events. jump right into it. All right, so I don't know if you were paying attention, but if you did, you noticed that the uh, subtitles don't, weren't even close. That's going to be a common theme. When they recorded um, the audio, they... God damn, that's still real loud. Um, they pretty much let the... They had a rough outline of what they wanted, but they pretty much let the voice actors do what they wanted. As audio, especially uh, Terry Perseus, who is the voice of Shodan. She pretty much wrote her own lines and did her own audio mixing. Right, we have a couple of emails, but the first one is going to be probably the most important. Uh, Rebecca Lansing. Employee 2 4601, listen carefully. My name is Rebecca Lansing, and I'm a counter terrorism consultant to Try Optimum. We're tracking a disruption on Citadel Station, something involving an onboard AI called Showdown. You are Triops' only contact on station. Communications are out, and there is evidence of biological contamination. The mining link
laser is charging for a possible strike against Earth. There's a man named Nathan Darcy who may know something about taking the laser offline. His office is near the central hub on your level. The AI is on the bridge. Once the laser is out, look for the source of the problem there. And by the way, we know all about you and your friend Diego. Pull this off and we'll clear your record. That implant you're wearing is military-grade hardware. Use it well. Lancing out. Okay, so shit has gone bad on station. Give me just a second, I'm gonna check something. Okay, I've done a little audio tweaking, so that should help. Um, so, uh, going over the interface real quick. Uh, this was what the game originally looked like. It's hideous. Um, when, and it had a, I'm not even sure I can do it anymore. Um, it had a mouse control. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. You can use the mouse to do audio leaning up or down. Yeah, neat, isn't it? Um, let's see if we can, oh, whoops. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got some audio, um, audio events happening that are going to pretty much talk over me, so I might as well just get along, get a move on. Uh, but hitting two key brings up the full screen mode. Um, I don't know if this was actually included in the original release of the game in 1994, but it was included in the System Shock Portable, which was a fan, essentially, recreation from the ground up of the original game and then taken by Night Dive, and they did another visual upgrade of some of the UI. Um, these are much cleaner pictures than what we had originally. Um, and of course, Night Dive is doing the remake, which I'm excited for, because uh, I played the... Uh, I've played the demo, it's fantastic. It plays real but well. It modernizes a lot of the issues with this game. Right. So, those are our first enemy, the serve bots. They're supposed to be, like, helpful robots that wait, help you wake up out of cryo. Yeah, that's not, not gonna happen. Um, this is, we have access to a medical bed. This is gonna be one of the few we have access to, so... It's a loud-ass door on the other side of this wall. That is a camera. As a matter of fact, hang on one second. All right, I've done a few, a few tweaks. A few tweaks um, to one of the things I did was turn on online help. Online help is an in-game kind of tutorial assistance program that comes as part of the HUD. So it's kind of an in-universe help system. And one of the things it does is it points out a bit like that you destroy to lower the security up. Each floor of this space station, we're on a, city, we're on a place called Citadel Space Station, um, each floor has its own security groups. And you have to take down that those security security to a certain level before you can access certain doors. This doesn't isn't necessary to complete most levels, but it does get you access to some nifty shit. Um, weapons, ammo, mods. So as you go through the game, you pick up cybernetic module. Not that's actually the other other game. You pick up um, wrong button. Uh, these slots are for cybernetic modules for lack of a better term. And they it allow you to do things like hover jets and three, 360 visual um, built-in compass. I can turn on or off. Um, the, the data reader, which we have access to. I gotta step in that button. Um, so <laughs> F2 brings up the data reader. That's not what I wanted. F1 for the weapons because... If I mouse up, we get access to this thing, and you have to manually load these things. This is the needle pistol. This is our starting... It's a compressed gas pistol firing... Essentially, flechette rounds. It's a tiny flechette pistol. Uh, we did have one more email. Or a log. 
Level one locks. Remember, we are employee two four dash two dash four zero six one. Um, looks like Diego is happy with my work. They're firing up the sleep machine for me now. Gotta admit, with the goons from Triop caught me, I thought I'd be for sure I'd take me offline. Instead, Diego just asked for a favor, hack him into showdown, and all is forgiven. Plus six months in a healing coma reminds me a cyberjack interface even Triop execs execs couldn't swing. I'll be king of the net. Even so, I have just handed the most powerful AI in the system to a fumbling corp VP, and there's no telling what'll happen. Nothing good. They, they tell me the coma leaves you foggy, so I'll leave myself some reminders. First off, the combo to the healing suite is 451. This is where that came from, that old joke. 0451 or 451. Code from many games, Dishonored, um, System Shock 2, obviously. I, there's a couple more, but uh, they escape me at the moment. Uh, second, I stash some useful. Oh, uh, the code to Alex's office from Prey. New Prey 2022 or whatever it is. 2018, whatever. Uh, second, I've stashed some useful stuff in the maintenance hatch, which we just got. That's. This You're supposed to read this before you open the maintenance hatch, but that's irrelevant. Uh, under the grating north of the healing suite. Yeah, we were just there. Last and best, I finished the system analyzer, which will let me keep eye on Shodan events processes. In the storage closet outside the sleep machine, and Tim is off to bed for half a year. Good night. Um, interesting. And then we've got another one. What is this? Another email. That's a button. Also a button. Interesting. Oh. Address. Another email. Logs. Now, audio logs are going to be a thing. Shodan security is closing down on us. The elevators are frozen. Myra keeps saying that it's the cameras and the medical CPU core that Shodan's using these to hold onto the level. That's all fine, but I don't really see how it helps. The thing is everywhere. So that kind of gives you a hint to what I said. Destroy the cameras, and you can help uh, cut access to Shodan. Out, right? What the hell is that? Whatever it is, it seems hostile. Uh, so left click, mouse interface, double click to use objects. Right Welcome back to, to Citadel Station. We hope your somnolent healing stage went well. Today is the 6th day of November, year 2072. You are currently in the healing suites located on the first level. Level 2 contains the research laboratories, 3 houses the Department of Maintenance, and the storage cells are on level 4. The flight deck is on level 5. Level 6 holds crew and executive suites, and level 7 is systems engineering. Level 8 houses the Department of Security. The bridge is located on level 9, and energy systems on level R. All levels can be accessed by the elevator in 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 Alpha Quad. We hope you have a pleasant stay on Citadel Station. Hmm. One more. Gunther was killed today. I can't let myself think about it. I think I understand how Shodan is doing it. When we destroy the cameras and CPU nodes, Shodan loses some of its control over the station functions, at least on this level. I think I can restore manual control in the hospital. Okay, so that was a little bit to unpack, but essentially... We're gonna have to go back and reference this message from Shodan, which is in emails. Um, kind of, you can actually hear her going rogue there at the end. That's what the, all that background audio noise was. Um, hmm. Oh. Yep, it's a ladder. All right, um, but it also gives us directions on how to use the uh, on what what's going on or where things are on the station because this is effectively open world, um, if not practically. Um, and we'll see once we get off this level. Maybe it's mostly because they hurt, and I don't really have a real good. Against 
So yeah, fighting those things is not ideal. Uh, search bodies, nothing. So these guys are the weakest enemies in the game. They're standard mutants, but they're also, they can be one of the most useful because they carry, they occasionally drop these little med patches. And med patches are going to be your standard healing item for pretty much the entirety of the game. Um, the game has access, you very infrequently have access to healing beds. Most of the time they'll either be broken or rigged somehow. Uh, so don't count on using those, you'll be using the med patches most of the time. And until you set certain conditions, you can't risk dying. Because you can in fact die with no consequences under certain conditions. Well, no consequences, you kind of have to make up what you lost. There's also the Berserk Combat Booster, which is fun. Um, but we'll get to that when we have to, because we are going to have to use it when we get to the next level. Hello! So, now we have access to the Spark Beam. Most of the time that doesn't drop, so a Spark Beam is a good, good weapon. It's essentially the phaser from Star Trek. Copyright DF. But that's what it is. It's a, it's a phaser. See? Its ammunition draws from this pool of energy up here. So essentially, it's unloaded ammunition as long as we have energy. Um, and depending on what setting we put it on, we can put it on heat overload, uh, which does a ton of damage, but ma almost maxes out our heat entirely. I like using it to destroy cameras because it does pretty soon those cameras are going to get some sort of ridiculous places. Hard to see, hard to hard to get to. Um, but, hi! So we've got, actually have two enemies here. One is dead, for some reason. Um, and one is still walking around. So we've got the cyborg drone, called cyborg cops, because they kind of look like police officers, but they're cyborg drones. And then right there is a cyborg assassin. And those guys look like ninjas. Because why not have ninjas in your video game? Especially cyber ninjas. Because this is a cyberpunk game. Kind of, more or less. Um, one of the things you might pick up on pretty quickly, depending on how nasty things get, is that this game has respawning enemies. There's no there's no set enemy numbers. I got them both. Okay, cool. In order to keep things tense, and this, things can get very tense. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a tendency to psych myself out a little bit playing this game, just because this is can get a little rough. I'm gonna save some ammo and kill this guy. I know where a lot of enemies are, but because they respawn it, they random. Um, you have to be careful. And there's a couple enemies we're literally not equipped to fight at the moment. So, the nice thing about some of these guns is you can just pick them up and then move on. So, one of the things that the online help system does, that the reason it gets turned off, is it will point out hidden doors. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is where we want to be. Because there, we're going to need this, the items in here. There's supposed to be a mutant. There he is. He didn't like that. But we didn't trigger him, so it doesn't really matter. Yes, the game has enemies with triggering distances. We need to get in there. But there's a few things going on here. First things first. Search the bodies. Second, read the note. All right, engineer's report on what Hessman, as I feared, showed hands malfunctions are manifesting in Citadel Cyberspace Net. Several storage lockers and rooms have been sealed with their controls put on cyber toggles. 
only accessible in cyberspace. Also, some codes to sensitive areas on the station have been encoded onto loose data fragments. Although all station personnel capable of entering cyberspace have clearance for these codes, I'm very concerned about the potential security hazard. I'll try to have Shodan introduce defensive programs into cyberspace to keep potential intruders from the floating data and cyber titles. Thanks, asshole. So he's made our life much more difficult, but we did have an audio log to listen to, so let's do that real quick. If any survivors can hear me, please. Some of us are still resisting Shodan. We have a sanctuary in Beta Quadrant, guarded by a radioactive trench. There's a force bridge that operates off a wiring panel. If you're coming in from Alpha, our guards will extend the bridge for you. Be very careful. The mutants are all over the corridors. Good luck. Alright, so that gives us pretty much our next objective. But, and this is very important, we need to go into cyberspace first. This game actually has two modes. We have normal mode and cyberspace. Oh boy, this controls completely separate to pretty much the entirety of the game. Um, mouse driven, you automatically kind of cruise forward. Level 1 security taken offline, yeah. You can see through walls because, of course, you can. This is cyberspace. Oh, I just kicked myself out. Hang on. Um, we have a little bit of a time limit in the left corner. We hit S to speed up. Those are mines, which means you take damage. Your damage is just... It's not your character's damage, per se, but it is um, the... So... I'm gonna I'm gonna get a little ahead of myself, but it's the your construct, your your uh, cyber construct, decoy software. I don't really know what that does because I never used it. Need objects that'll be interesting, and we picked up games. Yes, this game has built-in games. They they put a lot of effort into this. So combat's the same. You left click to fire your in this case pulsar soft. And you do get mo another type of software. Uh, you also have shield software. And you need to dive into cyberspace to... to acquire new versions of this software. Medical security... Oh, can I... There's... Better security presence controlled by CPUs and maintained by security companies. Yes, that's important. This is Ooh, Pulsar level two. Nice. I think I have to double click this. Give me a second. Ow. Okay. I have um, gotten myself a little turned around here. A second. Um, this is also one of those things where people will get motion sickness, and I, if you do, I apologize. Okay, so we grab that. We can see other areas where we might go later, and that which we will not get to. I think the entirety of this world is built all in one area, but it's just separated um, into various interconnected rooms, because that would make sense. So we failed to open the door, so I gotta do this again. Give me just a second, and I'll, let me figure this out, and I'll be right back. So yeah, as it turns out, the um, little stop sign, if you looked down, the, the the node, the switch was there. The cyber toggle. This is important. This room itself is extremely important because it allows you access to this piece of equipment. The SV-20 Mag Pulse. It has eight shots. We're going to need every single one of those eight shots because... This game has has done something very interesting with its enemies. A lot of them are vulnerable. There's a severed head for you. A lot of them can be vulnerable to multiple weapons, but some of them are not vulnerable to weapon these weapons at all. The spark beam, in this case, will not kill an, an enemy specific to this not specific to this level, but first encountered on this level, neither will the dart gun. So the only way to kill this particular target is with the mag pulse rifle, and this thing can kill us very quickly, so we need to be careful. Alright, so, gross. Status report. We're holed up in the beta quadrant behind a radioactive trench. The mutants are scavenging for food in the corridors and nesting in gamma. 
I sent a party to the West Wing for supplies maybe 12 hours ago. Nathan Darcy is thinking up ways to disable the mining laser. It looks like we might hold them off. Sounds like hope. Doesn't look like it, though. Also, check the bodies for loot. Ooh, good stuff. Um, I get it, the MML standard rounds. So, this is, the, those are pistol magazines. But we also have this thing, Spent Sensor Round Multi-View Unit Version 1. Sensor Round gives us a camera. In the back of our head. Here's the problem, you notice that updating? Yeah, that's... Ooh, okay, two things. It burns energy, which, okay. If we have access to batteries or energy towers or energy replenishment area, uh... Um, it's fine. It's no big deal. But... Turn on the lights. That's one. Um, that was a nasty little, little encounter, too, because he shot us before we realized he was there. Okay, so now we have access to Teflon rounds. So... Um... Alright, power station. That was the word I was looking for. If we have access to a power station, it's no big deal. But if we don't have access to a power station, then that's a problem. Um... This is not where we want to be. So Alpha is not where we want to be, but we have enemies nearby. And they can take care of it. By camera. So yeah, this this game is all is really about moving slow, taking your time, making sure you kick your targets. Um, there's only one problem with the mag pulse. It's next to worthless or going around corners because that ball has a hitbox, unlike the other weapons in the game. But there's a few other weapons in the game that don't have hitboxes, but yeah, that ball has hit has a hitbox, which means if it if you don't make that corner, like you fire it right here, it'll hit this corner rather than the target beyond it. The hoppers never have anything, which is really obnoxious considering how dangerous they are. But anyway, we have ourselves a door which goes to nitro pack. Nitro packs are. Good way to kill yourself. That's pretty much all I'm gonna say. God damn that ladder. That elevator is loud. Um, the audio balancing. Not so good. Competent, but not great. Um, okay, sometimes there's nasties in here. So we've got a couple items here. Tunnel system information. Quick status on what's going on. This, it's not rotating. There are three ecopods remaining. These are the ecopods. 90% 90, 90 of the jet life pods have been jettisoned. But the station has stopped rotating. That's interesting. Here's something else. The DH-07 stun gun. I'm leaving it there because I'm not an idiot. Um, it does minimal damage to mutants and does no damage to cyborgs, so it's not really even worth picking up. Um, we have a note here. Aaron Talbot, 29 September 2072. Now the four cases of the mystery virus reported today. They have been increasing rumors that this whole mess is the result of, of a screw-up in the experimental biolabs. If this is true, then why the hell aren't they telling us anything that could help us cure the victims? My first patient, who came in two days ago, is starting to display unsettling physical deformities. Furthermore, he's not responding to any conventional treatment. I will consult with Dr. Stackhouse tomorrow. I know she has two patients in similar condition. So, we now have a virus that is mutating this, the crew of the space station. And, 
and is turning them into mutants. Funny how that works. So if you see me, like, my head, I open up a container or search a body, and then my head swings wildly. This is Nathan Darcy's office. Uh, it's because I'm hitting the E key, and sometimes when you hit the E key, all it does is it doesn't do anything. So you either stay locked in this mode or you stay locked in this mode. E key unlocks the cursor mode or locks it. So we have a Darcy note, audio log. Let's listen to it. And Darcy, he's important. He said he knew how to stop the mining laser. What mining laser? All right, Althea. We can destroy the laser by firing it into the station's own shields. Isotope X-22 is stored in the science level, and we need to bring it down to the reactor level to power the shields. Then you turn them on, use the safety override code to enable the laser, and fire. The laser controls and my notes are on the science level, and the override code's in the science library. I have no idea how you're going to do all this, but good luck. So now we have another objective, and which is to destroy the mining laser, because that seemed important. Also, there's next to no fall damage in this game. Hooray! For small mercies. Um, so we need to go to Alpha Quadrant, because that's where they said the survivors were. But I'm going to loop around to Gamma, because there's a couple of things here, like an audio log. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Okay, I went in I almost peaked the mic. Um, that's probably going to be way too loud. I'm going to play with the audio some more. Um, after I finish this recording. But, Jesus Christ, is that loud? Uh, I went and I turned it down a little bit, so the problem is now all the, um, the gunfire and all the exciting bits is going to be muted as well. So, well, I have to put up with it. At least you'll be able to hear me when I talk about stuff, because, you know, otherwise you just get drowned out, drowned out by the uh, audio. We got ourselves a little mutant hiding in the corner. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, that noise is this friggin' door. I think it's actually doing that because the mount of the camera is embedded in the wall. Destroying the, the camera itself, and the mount stays. So it's screwing with the door. It also makes a really neat, of, neat and disturbing effect because this is a grisly scene. It's just nothing but corpses. Um, this is a bit of a lost opportunity. I know what they were going for here. Uh, I think it's done a little better in the remake. Right, maybe hindsight is twenty twenty. We also have two audio logs to listen to, so give me just a moment. There's another spark beam, we don't need that. I'll pick that up. Ooh, what's this? Group access card. No new access gate. So there's a couple ver couple key cards floating around, um, and you don't always need to pick them all up, but it's good to have them just in case. We have three. I, I was mistaken, so let's grab this one. The resistance faction led by Keith Swanson left a week ago. We found the mutants fighting over the remains this morning. We're caught between the mutants and the cyborgs, so I'm worried whether we can carry out Darcy's plan. We're going to send Ellen and Carl through the cyborg territory to reach the elevator. That doesn't sound good. Okay, what else we got? Carl has come back from recon without Ellen. He says they took Ellen into a room marked Cyborg Conversion. And now he's a cyborg assassin. Carl marked the room with the word here before he ran. One of the technicians says we can just flip a switch and make the converter a surgery unit again. With only 12 of us left, though, it may be an academic point. Maybe someone else should have been leader. That's not good. What does Ozark say? We're finished. Keith and the others went down the access corridor an hour ago to fight the mutants. None of them have come back. Soon the mutants will come for the rest of us. Yep, that's pretty bleak. Um... Yeah, I don't think they made it. Uh, 
nothing in here. That's gross. But these guys are carrying quite a bit of goodies. We're gonna keep going. This is also, as it turns out, the back door into Alpha Quadrant. So, the game has a problem. Only a minor one. It's got a couple of problems, but that's beside the point. Uh, the one specifically I'm referring to is the slipperiness of the player, because there is physics of a sort in this game, and if you're standing on the edge of something, the game will try to push you off. Also, this gun is an indicator that we have a cyborg assassin on our hands. And those little... assholes... Um, we'll just... You die real quick. Uh, they're actually even more dangerous in the remake because they not only have their shuriken guns, which fire ninja stars, but they also throw bombs. The upshot is he's carrying some darts. Um, oddly enough, we really won't need the dart gun for much longer because there's another hidden door. It. I'm not picking these up. These are darts, um, they're good only against mutants. They don't do anything with cyborgs. It's like, um, stun gun. It barely works. It, actually, the crank darts are good against the mutants, but they don't do anything to the cyborgs or the robots, so that's gonna be a pass. Alright, we've got another hidden door here, and now it's one of the features that I was talking about. Now, wait a minute. This is blocked by this by the security on this level. So, the security level that we've been hacking away at is now too- is still too high. Okay, this looks about right. Kind of. This is actually the wrong side of the bridge. We actually came out on the... What's the word I'm looking for? The survivor's side, because all the survivors were in that room, and now they're all dead. Bummer. And this is what it was talking about when they mentioned the access cord. There's a little better look at the... Yeah, see, we're getting shot without any kind of warning. And I'm not going to waste energy on that. No. Mutant, because he can't hurt us from here. Yeah, the uh, regular mutants do not have any kind of ranged attack, so they're effectively helpless at distance, which makes this dart gun ideal. Um, I think I actually picked up a second audio log. Yep, okay. I must be one of the last ones who hasn't changed. Shodan must have altered the healing machine installed in Alpha Quadrant. It does things to people now. I, uh, I think I saw Beth yesterday, but she had so many implants, I c couldn't be sure. If, if I can get to the machine, uh, I know I can set things right again. Interesting and very important information. Things are looking pretty bleak for people on the medical level. Got the supplies from the West Wing. Hanson and Rain killed by mutants nesting the access corridor. We can't just hide here. They're killing us one by one. In an hour, about 20 of us are going to rush them. We'll try to break through the access corridor and then go to the bridge. If we fail, God save our souls. Well, that was an interesting cut. And we have ourselves a very interesting, um, encounter. Potentially extremely hazardous. Uh, 
So I uh, kind of just glitched him around the corner, which I don't care about. Uh, because screw him. Uh, okay, convergence. That's what we wanted, kind of. So this game has a certain... There's a certain way to make your self essentially immortal under certain conditions. And I think I said this earlier. But we gotta get there first. Ah, there's a mutant. And there's a gas grenade. So I don't like picking up the gas grenades because they take up indoor space and they hurt us. But oh, I also picked up this, the first aid kit. It does a full heal on you if you use it. Um, no matter what condition you're in. Uh, there's also battery pack, which gives you... Regular battery packs give you... 40%? That's a nasty trick. That hurts. So I, I'm picking up fragmentation grenades because they're very useful, but they're also extremely difficult to use. And an excellent way to kill yourself if you're on an accident. How? Somebody's aggressive today. Yeah, we've kind of hindered, entered cyborg territory. This is what he was talking about, the, about them being trapped between the cyborgs and the mutants. Um, we're actually going to want to go down to this pit because there's some stuff down here. But I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to ensure our immortality <laughs> first. Yet. Okay, we're actually going to use a medical patch. So, we survived that particular ambush. Um, but you can hear them. They're all over the place. We also have these really interesting kind of arms. Um, which makes us... Makes getting to stuff kind of... Ah! Shit. Ooh! That scared me, actually, because I didn't realize how many there were in there. This game is brutal, so cheese the shit out of it if you can. Take that, everybody. Yes, okay. So, Cyborg conversion cancelled. Standard now. station restoration procedures online. I'm sorry, sir, excuse me, I interrupting you. Uh, we are now effectively immortal. I really need to save my power, but that's just it. Um, yeah, so now we have... Th this is one of the game's unique things, because this game is hard. Uh, and the developers acknowledged it. Uh, we can die at any time, because some of these enemies are really nasty. Especially if we get to the bomb cars. We'll get to that, actually, in the next floor. But... We're, listening to the, we're almost out of time, so we're going to listen to this audio log, and then I'm going to save, and that's going to be the end. We underestimated Shodan. He's re I mean, it's reprogrammed regeneration rooms all over the station into cyborg conversion chambers. Anyone going in to get healed comes out as a cyborg. I've disconnected the medical CPUs from Shodan's main data bank, so we can reset them to their normal healing functions without Shodan noticing. I'm on my way now to reset the one on the hospital level. Yep, he got all the way here, and then proved it. So, oops. Um, also that line, he, in the original text, and I gotta stop opening doors while I'm talking, because it still drowns me out. In the original text for the audio logs, uh, the text, text version of the logs, shut in as a male. When they went to do audio recordings, for this game, they decided to make Shodan female because I don't mm, because Harry Brosius did such a great audition, audition or something like that. I don't remember the exact details of the story, but they really liked her. They let her essentially run with it, so and they decided to make Shodan female because it kind of fits a little better. So anyway, that 
fun little tidbit. That's going to be the end of it for now. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.